Okay. So there are uh, different phases involved in uh, software development or a program development. So what first phase is actually the problem definition or problem understanding. Then comes the problem analysis, then the design. And after that will be the coding or implementation. Then comes testing. And finally, it is maintenance. So these are the different phases involved in development of a software or a program. Okay. So now we are what we are discussing is uh, just the design phase two methods which we can use uh, to design the solution for a given problem that is algorithm and flowchart. So this is how we can define an algorithm. So how to define an algorithm? It is the step-by-step -step procedure to solve a particular problem. So this is the definition. Coming to the properties of uh, algorithm. So these are the five properties of any algorithm uh, which you are going to design. One is the input, then output, definiteness finiteness and effectiveness coming to the input so here input means an algorithm what you are going to design it may be having zero or more inputs so without inputs it may be directly performing the operations on the data but it has to produce at least one output so algorithm may have zero or more inputs algorithm must produce at least one output coming to the definiteness each instruction what you write in the algorithm must be clear and unambiguous. So there should not be any confusion in the statements what you are going to write in the algorithm. So each and every instruction must be clear, simple and it must be unambiguous. Coming to the finiteness, the algorithm must terminate after a finite number of steps. So whatever the algorithm you are designing, it should not be infinite. So it, there should be finite number of steps at some point that algorithm has to terminate. So this is one more property of an algorithm. Coming to the last property of the algorithm, that is effectiveness. So each step must be sufficiently simple and it must be basic. It should be possible to carry out the instructions of the algorithm. So you should not write just complex statements in the algorithm. It should be simple, basic enough so that each uh, uh, step what you specify must be uh, possible to carry out those instructions. Okay. So these are the five different properties of the algorithm. That is input, output, definiteness, finiteness and effectiveness. So this is another formal definition of an algorithm. An algorithm can be formally described as a well-ordered, finite collection of unambiguous and effectively computable operations that when executed produces a result. So whatever the five properties we had discussed, so including those uh, five properties, uh, this is what the formal definition you can give for an algorithm. It should be well-ordered, finite collection of unambiguous and effectively computable operations which when executed must produce a result. So this is the formal definition of an algorithm. Now coming to the notations which you can use to write the algorithm. So remember there is no hard and fast rule to write an algorithm. So this is one way of writing the algorithm with these notations. So the following notations are used while writing algorithms. First we are going to specify the name of the algorithm. So it specifies the problem to be solved. After that, we are going to specify the input. So it tells what input is required for the algorithm and what is the output you are going to get once that algorithm is traced. Okay. So that is it specifies the output produced by the algorithm. So first we will specify the name, then the input, then output. Then we are going to write the series of steps or sequence of steps along with the step number, which is an unsigned positive integer. Uh, we are going to specify after uh, the word step. So step number, it is the identification tag of an instruction, which is an unsigned positive integer. After that, uh, and in each of the instruction, what you write in the algorithm, if you find that description is required for the instruction, what you have written, you can have explanatory comment for the instruction. So that is specified within pair of square braces. So it follows the step number, that is after the step number is given, you can describe the operation performed in that step by using a pair of square brackets. Within that, you are going to write the descriptive comment. 
The last is termination. It specifies the end of the algorithm. Uh, the last uh, step we are going to give is a stop or end. Okay, that indicates termination of the algorithm. So these are the different notations used in writing an algorithm. First, we are going to specify the name of the algorithm. Then we'll specify the input, meaning what input is required for the algorithm. Then we'll specify the output produced by the algorithm. So after that, the step number, sequence of steps we'll write along with the step number, which is an unsigned positive integer. For each step, what you write, if explanation is required, you can have descriptive comments within square braces before the actual operation. But finally, the last step, what you are going to specify is to indicate the end of the algorithm where we'll write the statement as either stop or end. So that will be the last instruction in the algorithm. Coming to one example of algorithm, so consider this problem. Design an algorithm to compute the sum of two integers. So this is what the operation to be performed. So what can be the name of the algorithm? So this is how we can write the algorithm. Algorithm colon. This uh, the problem is to compute sum of two integers. So this can be the name of the algorithm. Coming to the input. So what is the input required to compute sum of two integers? So we need uh, two integers to compute the sum. So what is the input? It is two integers. So that can be the input. Two valid integers. Then what is the output expected? It is the sum. So sum of two integers will be the output expected. Coming to the step, the first step, step one, we need to, uh, this is the sequence of operations to be performed. First, we need to read the two integers, then we need to compute the sum of two integers. Finally, we need to display that uh, sum computed. So these are the operations involved uh, in computing this uh, or in finding the solution. Okay. So in step one, what we are doing, this is the descriptive comment which we have written uh, within square braces, a pair of square braces. Input uh, two valid integers then the instruction can be read say a comma b any uh, variable you can use to hold the data that is the integer data uh, here i've used a and b any name you want to give you can so read a comma b is the instruction what this instruction will do it, uh, is it reads the value for a and b so this is first step coming to the next step once the input is read next is the processing in step two what we can write is compute sum of two integers. So how to compute sum of two integers? It is A plus B, the operation performed. So whatever the result you'll get after addition, that has to be stored in a separate variable. So here I've used the variable sum to hold that result. See, what is the comment I have written? Compute sum of two integers. This is the descriptive comment I've written. The, the instruction what we have written is in step two, it is sum equals A plus B. So if you want to use equals, you can. Since it is algorithm, uh, if you want to use uh, other notation like arrow, directed arrow, that is also fine. A plus B is computed and result is stored in the variable on the left-hand side of this arrow. Okay. Coming to the next step, that is step 3. We need to output the sum computed. For that, we can write print instruction. Print sum. Sum is a variable which is holding the sum of two numbers. So that variable name I have to specify in this print instruction, print sum. And you know that last step in any algorithm, it is termination. Or you can write end of algorithm as the comment and the instruction can be end or stop. See, this is how we are going to write the algorithm. So you just observe what notation we have used to write the algorithm. First, we have specified the name of the algorithm. Then we have specified the input, what input is required to perform the operation then what is the output expected and then sequence of steps we are going to write along with the step number with descriptive comment and followed by that the instruction to perform that operation so uh, for this problem this is the sequence we have written first we have read two integers then we have computed the sum and then we have printed the sum and finally it is end of the algorithm where we have written end instruction okay so this is one simple example I've given more and more uh, uh, problems uh, for which you need to write algorithm and flowchart so that we'll discuss in tutorial classes. Going on to the next design method that is flowchart. So how to define flowchart? So this is how we can define it. Flowchart is the graphical representation 
for diagrammatic representation of an algorithm showing that direction of flow of logic involved in solving the problem. Okay, you'll be using directed arrows to show the flow of logic in which order uh, the data flow is taking place. And it is more easy to analyze the flow chart compared to uh, algorithms since this is the diagrammatic representation. So we can also tell flow chart as the blueprint of an algorithm. See, flow chart is graphical represent representation or diagrammatic representation of what algorithm which shows the direction of flow of logic which is involved in solving the problem. So if you consider the previous problem where uh, to compute sum of two numbers, so what is the flow of logic? First, the input is to be read, then we have to do the processing, that is the summation is to be computed and then we need to print the result. So this is the flow of logic. So that we are going to represent using uh, some geometrical shapes. So what are those geometrical shapes we are using to uh, write the flow chart that we'll discuss now, okay? So this is the definition of flow chart. As I already mentioned, flow chart is easy to understand and analyze the problem. These are the uh, few uh, program flow chart symbols which you can use to write the flow chart. I've uh, listed only a few which we commonly use in uh, uh, this uh, course. Okay, there are lots of other uh, flowchart symbols available. Let us not worry about other symbols. We shall concentrate on only these uh, flowchart symbols. First is the oval. Oval, what is, what is the purpose of using oval? It is used to indicate start and stop of the flowchart. And whatever the symbol you use, within that symbol, you are going to write a small description. Uh, say, for example, uh, if you consider oval, so this will be the first and last symbol in the flowchart and within this oval we are going to specify start uh, to indicate this is the start of the flowchart and at the end we'll be, use, we'll be using the same symbol where we'll uh, specify within this oval stop to indicate uh, end of the flowchart. So this is how we are going to use the flowchart symbols. The first is the oval to indicate start and stop. Next what you are seeing is parallelogram. It is used for input and output. For the flowchart, whatever the input uh, that is accepted, so that we are going to specify. That instruction we are going to write within this parallelogram and the output, whatever we want to display. So that is again uh, written using this parallelogram. Okay. Coming to the next symbol, that is rectangle. It is used for processing. So any computation you want to do. Say, uh, say for example, sum of two numbers if you want to compute. And addition of two numbers is the computation step which you are going to do once the input is read. So that statement we are going to write within this rectangle. So rectangle is meant for processing. So if you want to make some decisions, so based on some condition, you want to test some condition and based on that you want to uh, uh, just transfer the control to some location where some set of statements are executed. Or if that condition what you are testing is a failure, some other set of statements you want to execute. So in that case, we can make use of rhombus symbol. So rhombus is for decision making. Okay. So next is hexagon. It is used for repetition. We can also use rhombus for repetition. How to make use of rhombus that we'll see once we go to the actual uh, C uh, constructs for decision making. For the time being, just know that rhombus is used for decision making. Hexagon is used for repetition. So some set of statements you want to repeat for fixed number of times, then you can use hexagon. Then circle, it is used for connection or continuity. So uh, assume uh, the flowchart is too lengthy and it, it will run for two pages. So in that case, you can just uh, give some label to the uh, this uh, within this circle. And the same label you can use uh, at the beginning of the next page. So continuation or connection uh, after the, the flow of logic, uh, some set of statements are executed and you want to continue with the next statement, you can make use of this circle. How to use it as and when we discuss the uh, dif different problems, we will continue. So next is uh, directed arrows. As I already told, a flow chart shows the direction of flow of logic. How we are showing the direction of flow of logic? That is using directed arrows. So arrows are used for flow control. So these are a few uh, symbols or uh, the geometrical shapes that are used in the flowchart. Oval, parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, hexagon, circle, and directed arrows. What for oval is used? It is the start and stop. Parallelogram for input and output. 
rectangle for processing, rhombus for decision making, hexagon for repetition, circle for connection and arrows to specify the uh, flow of uh, logic. Okay. Coming to the guidelines to be followed whenever you are uh, designing any flow chart. Every flow chart should begin with a terminator label start and end with a terminator label that is stop. This I have already mentioned. The symbols in the flow chart are connected by lines with arrowheads to define the direction of flow from step to step. So I should not write undirected arrow, uh, sorry, undirected lines. It should be directed lines you need to specify so that it indicates the flow of logic. The next, the lines should never cross. Connectors can be used to prevent drawing a long and jagged line between the symbols. So don't specify the uh, cross lines. Or just uh, uh, if uh, you need to show the continuity or connection, you can make use of circle. So only one flow line should come out from a process symbol. Process symbol means rectangle. So from the rectangle, rectangle is... Uh, the symbol you're using for processing out of that only one uh, flow line must come out only one flow line should enter a decision symbol but two or three should come out of it so it depends on uh, uh, how many alternatives you are having based on the uh, condition what we are testing okay and the labels should be placed on the flow lines coming out of the decision symbol to indicate the decision so you are testing some conditions. Say, for example, you want to check whether uh, the number what you have taken is equal to 10. So if there are two possibilities, it may be equal to 10 or it may not be equal to 10. So that if it is true, whatever the condition you are testing, if it is true, where to transfer the control? If it is false, where actually you can transfer the control? So that we are indicating by specifying the labels over the lines, okay, over the flow lines. So decision making. For this, we are using rhombus and uh, out of this, uh, you can have, uh, say, two lines coming out, one for true case, other for false case. So, this is just one example I have given and we will be seeing more and more problems uh, which involves decision making and repetition process, okay. So, next, write within the symbols briefly. We will not write detailed information in each of the flowchart symbols. It is just in brief. The statement we are going to write. So the symbols may be drawn of any size, only the shape is standard. It is not that uh, you have to uh, write the symbols in uh, uh, smaller size, it can be of any size, but what is important is uh, the standard symbols used in the flowchart. Say if it is input, then you have to use parallelogram. If it were to be processing, you have to use rectangle. So whatever the symbols were we listed in the previous slide, uh, those symbols are to be used to perform those respective operations. So this is about the guidelines, a few guidelines which are to be followed whenever you are designing a flowchart. Now we shall see an example on flowchart. Design a flowchart to compute the sum of two integers. So in the previous uh, slides, we checked how to design an algorithm to compute sum of two integers. Now we shall see how to design the flowchart to compute sum of two integers. As I told, the first and last symbol in the flowchart will be start and stop, where we have used oval. See, start, then we need to indicate the directed arrow, then we need to read the input. That is, two integers are to be read. Use parallelogram and specify read a comma b. So this is the name of the variables I have given, which holds the two integer data. Any name you want to give. To the variables that is left to you you can do so once uh, the input is read next is the processing for processing you need to make use of rectangle specify the directed arrow and just see what is the statement we have written within this it is sum equals a plus b so a and b are the variables which holds the two input integers we are adding these two and we are storing the result in sum so once the input and processing is completed next what is the flow it is to print the result that is held in some variable. This is what the symbol we are using. Print sum. So the sum computed will be printed. And finally, what is the last symbol you have to write? It is uh, oval to indicate end of the flow. See, 
what are the symbols for this problem what are the symbols we have used oval we have used to indicate start and stop start of the flow chart and end of the flow chart then after that we have used parallelogram to specify the input just observe for input and output we have used parallelogram read a comma b and print sum these two statements are written within the parallelogram and just see the order in which we have written the geometric shape so we need to show the flow of logic using directed arrows start then read a comma b then sum equals a plus b finally print sum and at the end you give stop okay so this is how we can write the flow chart or you can design the flow chart for a given problem